and somebody comes with um, probably economic abuse, maybe in her marriage or her... Uh, economic abuse? Yes. So we have a situation where a woman is married to a man and then the man says, you don't have to work. You, you are not supposed to work. You have to stay at home and take care of the that children. That is considered abuse. Yes, that's an abuse. So you tell this person not to work. And at the end of the day, you ration whatever thing you are supposed to give to her. For instance, I want to cook. I have to come to you and then you question me basically what I have to put together to make that meal. And so based on what I tell you, it's the amount of money you will give me. Whatever I need, I have to come to you, which is not supposed to be so. So a lot of women are probably in this situation and actually don't consider it abuse. They don't know. Yes, they don't know that it's abuse. Unless you decide from your perspective that I don't want to work, I want to stay at home. But if you are forced or asked not to work, from where your you partner have, yes, from the beginning. From your partner, it's an abuse. And we also have some people who are going, going through um, physical abuse. With the physical abuse, it starts with nagging. And usually we don't call it nagging, questioning. You ask the person questions and then they get irritated. They tell you, why are you asking me this? Why are you asking me that? And it turns into a heated argument before you realize physical exchange and then if the receiving partner, which usually happens to be the woman, is not too strong, the man hates her. And because she doesn't want to talk about it, she doesn't have a place to go to, she keeps it to herself. She comes out and then she begins to cover up. Either she's wearing makeup, she's wearing spectacles, and she's covering up. When they ask her why, she says, oh, I accidentally bumped my head into something. And when they come to us and we start the conversation, they reveal a lot to us. They share their pain, they share their stories, and we realize that they're really going through a lot. And we take it up from there. And such people too, some of them, within two sessions, they are okay. Some too need accommodation. So the Act Foundation actually has the only shelter in Ghana for abused women and children. And if you need shelter, we keep you there. And whilst you are in our care, depending on what you were doing, if you were in a corporate world, we'll find a way we um, liaise with the police and then we find protection for you. Then you can continue whatever you are doing. If you're not working, we have um, skill sessions and then um, therapeutic sessions that we engage you in. We talk to you. If you want to learn a skill at the shelter, we take you through that and then you engage yourself until such a period that you are okay and then we reintegrate you back into the society. Either we find you a place or if we are able to work on a mediation with your partner, then you can go back. Do, do you encourage mediation? Because if I, I feel that if a partner has physically abused um, their partner, that, that for me, it's grounds for never going back. Um, so the basic principle about social work is that you don't force people to make certain decisions. You can help them to see what their situation is. But if I decide that I want to go back, I can't force you to make that decision for you. So you have people where you can even take their partner to the court and then along the line they say, take I want to out. drop the case. So you cannot force the person to do that. Okay. In such a situation, if the person goes and the thing happens again and they come back, how do you, how do you deal? So now what we do is that we go into the communities to educate people. Yeah. so that they know forms of abuses, types of abuses, the people who abuse us, how it comes, what you can do about it. So sometimes you live in an environment where you might not be the person involved in the abuse, but you can see. And so when you see these things, you're able to detect and you're able to engage the partner or the person who is going through this abuse. And when you are doing this, you're also helping. So in such cases, the people who are going through it are aware and then they make these decisions for themselves. But if you are not able to do this, along the line, they think about what the general society is going to say about their situation, and they don't want to make this, those decisions, which makes it a little difficult for you, the social worker, to continue with your work. So in such situations, what, how do you um, find the solution in such situations? We still engage the person through counseling until such a time that they come to terms with the reality and they yeah. accept it. You don't coerce them. You just let them see the limelight see for them. themselves. Yes. Okay. You mentioned um, economic abuse. You mentioned physical abuse. 
We have sexual what? abuse as well. From their partners? Yes. Right. Um, this is something marriage comes with sometimes because I am married to you, I feel entitled that every time I feel like having sex with my partner, it means I have to get my way. But there are days people are not in the mood. People might not be up for it. Yeah. You should understand them. It's, they are your partners. So if I'm going through a situation or a moment in my life and you cannot understand and you want to force your way with me, I don't think it is acceptable. And we should all understand that each and everyone has their own personal moments where they want to be left alone. If you are an understanding partner, you should be able to engage your partner. Talk to your partner. Let them understand that, oh, I have needs, but you don't have to force yourself on it. And most of the times we have this. And with the sexual abuse, sometimes it turns even into physical. That's what I was, I was asking. Yes. Does it often turn to physical? Most of 